For this video, we're going to talk about how ascending into a high altitude environment can create conflict between our central chemoreceptors and our peripheral chemoreceptors. So when we are at sea level, the barometric pressure is approximately 760 millimeters of mercury. 21% uh, of the gas composition of atmospheric air is oxygen, which means that the partial pressure of oxygen is about 160 millimeters of mercury, which is going to be in relative abundance to when we ascend into altitude. While we are at sea level, our normal rate of alveolar ventilation is predominantly driven by the central chemoreceptors. So the central chemoreceptors located in within the medulla, uh, the central chemoreceptors detect uh, partial pressures of carbon dioxide indirectly by the brain ISF pH. So CO2 is a diffusible gas, so it can freely diffuse across the blood-brain barrier. Uh, once CO2 diffuses across the blood-brain barrier, it reacts with the brain ISF water to form carbonic acid, uh, which disassociates to a bicarbonate and a proton. So uh, the pH on a moment-to-moment -moment basis within the brain ISF is largely determined by the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. If, CO, if the partial pressure of CO2 goes up, that causes the brain pH to decrease, to become more acidic. Conversely, if the partial pressure of carbon dioxide goes down, that causes the brain ISF pH to increase, to become more alkalinic. So the central chemoreceptors are only sensitive to partial pressures of carbon dioxide indirectly. In contrast, the peripheral chemoreceptors, which aren't shown in this image, uh, they're in direct communication with arterial blood, and they're sensitive to uh, partial pressures of carbon dioxide, the, the plasma pH, and most importantly, the partial pressure of oxygen. The peripheral chemoreceptors are solely responsible for driving our rate of ventilation based upon oxygen demands. However, at sea level, when oxygen is in abundance, the main ventilatory drive at rest on a moment-to-moment -moment basis is determined by the central chemoreceptors based on how much CO2 we need to get rid of. While we're at sea level, our normal rate of ventilation precisely meets our demands based on how much oxygen we need to breathe in versus how much CO2 we need to get rid of. As we ascend into a high altitude environment, the barometric pressure decreases. This causes a decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen, which means that the atmospheric air becomes relatively deficient in oxygen. So our normal rate of ventilation, which precisely matched our oxygen demands and the demands to get rid of carbon dioxide, is now insufficient to meet our oxygen demands. We need to ventilate more, bring more oxygen into our lungs to bring the partial pressure of oxygen up to a normal level within the arterial blood. The problem is that the central chemoreceptors will tend to put a break or will tend to limit the amount at which we're able to ventilate. And if you go up too high too quickly, then the central chemoreceptors will prevent adequate ventilation to meet our oxygen demands, and therefore we can become hypoxic. And this is the basis of altitude sickness. To understand how this is occurring, let's think about the relationship between the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and the brain ISF pH. So as I said before, the central chemoreceptors are strictly sensitive to the brain ISF pH. And from the perspective of the central chemoreceptors, their goal is to maintain a normal interstitial fluid pH. Remember, the brain chemoreceptors are not sensitive to oxygen, so they're unaware that, that we could become potentially hypoxic uh, as we ascend into altitude. All they're sensitive to is what is the brain ISF pH. So as we ascend into altitude and we become hypoxic, our peripheral chemoreceptors will detect this, and they're going to try to drive up ventilation to try to bring the partial pressure of oxygen back up in the arterial blood. However, as this is done, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide decreases. This is because we're blowing off uh, CO2 more rapidly than we're producing it in our tissues. So as the amount of carbon dioxide in the blood decreases, this causes there to be a decrease in the amount of CO2 within the brain, which is going to cause a decrease 
in the rate of carbonic acid production, which means that the brain ISF pH is going to increase. It's going to become more alkalinic. The central chemoreceptors detect this and interpret this to mean that we are hyperventilating. We're ventilating too much. And so they will put a brakes on our ability to ventilate at a sufficient level to meet our oxygen demands. Okay, so in this situation, we're in a state of conflict between our central chemoreceptors and our peripheral chemoreceptors. Our peripheral chemoreceptors say ventilate more because we need oxygen. Our central chemoreceptors say quit ventilating quite so much because the brain is becoming alkalinic. Over time, we can acclimate though to this elevation and, and there's a variety of, of processes that take place during altitude acclimation, but just focusing on what's happening here between the chemoreceptors, uh, one of the main processes that's going to help relieve this conflict is there's going to be a change in the chemical composition of the brain ISF fluid. Specifically, as the brain fluids are being produced uh, at the chorid plexus, as the cerebral spinal fluids are being produced, the amount of bicarbonate that's allowed to become a constituent of the brain fluid uh, is regulated. It's a regulated process. And so in this case where we are hypoxemic and the brain is chronically alkalinic, the transport of bicarbonate from the blood side to the brain side is going to be reduced. Okay, so bicarbonate is basic. And so if the brain secretes less bicarbonate into the brain interstitial fluid, then there will be less base within the brain interstitial fluid, which will bring the pH back down. So as a result of the decreased bicarbonate secretion into the brain ISF, we are now able to maintain a higher rate of ventilation without creating an alkalinic brain interstitial fluid. So this will allow us to to ventilate at a high enough level that's going to be sufficient for our oxygen demands without altering the brain ISF pH due to the attendant decrease in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Interestingly though, returning to sea level after we have acclimated to that higher altitude situation poses a different problem. Because the bicarbonate concentration within the brain interstitial fluid is now reduced relative to normal, the brain chemistry is essentially set up such that if we were to return to our normal sea level rate of ventilation, that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide would be too high, and then we would become therefore acidic. The brain ISF would become acidic at a normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide for our sea level rate of ventilation. And the reason why is because when we return to sea level, uh, oxygen, atmospheric oxygen is once again in abundance. So based on our oxygen demands, uh, we no longer need to ventilate at that higher level of alveolar ventilation. We can return to that normal level of ventilation that we had prior to going into the altitude. When this happens, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide uh, increases. It increases back to that normal level that we had prior to uh, the acclimation process. But the problem is, is if this is higher partial pressure of carbon dioxide, there is not enough bicarbonate within the brain interstitial fluid to buffer the increase in protons due to the increased carbonic acid production based on the increase in the carbon dioxide. So we have too much CO2 now, and so the brain interstitial fluid detects this, and now based on this challenge to the brain ISF, maintains a still relatively high rate of ventilation in an attempt to keep that partial pressure carbon dioxide down. So we have to once again go through an acclimation process. This acclimation process is going to be the opposite of the altitude acclimation in that now at the choroid plexus, as the brain CSF is being produced, which is in communication with the brain interstitial fluid, uh, we increase the amount of bicarbonate that's transported into the brain ISF. This increases the bicarbonate concentration with the brain ISF, which will help increase the pH so it will not be acidic at a normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide. And so once again, we can ventilate at our normal level at sea level.
which will match our ventilation demands based on oxygen consumption and CO2 production.